Hi all, welcome. I'm going to try to uh, get most of the PowerPoints on video um, so I can upload them to YouTube and that will give us the time in class because we do have kind of limited class time um, to discuss any issues that you may be having as well as um, work with you individually on problems that again that you might be having with the software while we're in class and when you have access to the software. This kind of thing obviously you can do on your own time and hopefully I'll give you enough direction and not bore you to tears um, that we can get this taken care of outside of class. Alright, so chapter three we're focusing on setting up a document and um, in InDesign uh, when you create a new document you begin in the new documents dialog box and we are going to go into InDesign so you can see that um, we are going to do command or control N for a new document and you'll see what um, the, the overhead's talking about. We, you specify the number of pages the doc, document will contain uh, right here. Um, you specify the document size here. There are some default sizes but you can also do that as a custom size. Get out of here. Um, you can also identify what the uh, trim size is, which means simply what you're doing is, um, oh, for heaven's sakes, okay, fine. Um, get this over here. Um, the trim size, which is the height and the width of the actual document, and then whether or not the document will have facing pages. So again, trying to get this up so we can get the default or the document. So here um, then you would determine whether or not the document has facing pages. Now that's the first series of, um, of decisions that you have to make. You also have to determine in your layout whether or not you're going to have columns, how many columns, uh, the gutter size is the size between the um, between the columns. The margins obviously are the top, bottom, inside and outside and those can be identified both individually as well as as a whole. And then the bleed and the slug. Again remember the bleed is the wiggle room for the printer so that if they do uh, need some addition just a little bit of space they don't leave a white unsightly edge around your document if you have an image or a color pulled right to the edge. Um, all right, and I'm going to show you that because that didn't even make sense as I said it. So I'm going to do a bleed line. I'm going to assume that I'm going to have color that extends to all four edges. So I'm going to do a bleed on all four edges. I click that and you'll see that here is the tr here's the margin line. Here's the trim line, the actual size of the document, and then this is the bleed line, and this is where you pull images and uh, color or type, anything that you're going to run right to the edge so that if the printer needs to, um, or the printer doesn't cut it exactly, or the bindery person doesn't cut it exactly, um, there won't be an unsightly white um, edge, not um, unintentionally. All right, so, and then this is just what we just talked about. Um, the intent menu offers basic settings for three different types of documents. You can do either print, web, or digital publishing. And that's shown here on this drop down menu. And then if you do make one of those choices, um, that, that gives you different parameters, different um, pixels per inch that the uh, document is set up at, um, and a different uh, default sizes as well. Uh, the new document dialog box also allows you to specify, and we've already talked about that, margins and columns, um, and then gutter as well. You can save that document as a preset. So for example, if you were going to use this document setting again and again, perhaps in a, you know, in a couple, three um, designs that you have come up with are similar, then you can save all of those settings as a preset so you don't have to make that sort of those choices every single time. Now when you create a multiple page document with facing pages, InDesign automatically creates the first page on a single right hand page and the last page on a single left hand side. And that's again assuming that you have um, a cover and a back. So we're going to again do a command N 
for a new document. And we're going to have facing pages, but this time we're going to do 25 facing pages. And we're going to leave all the rest the same, just so you can see um, what the actual master pages and the resulting documents look like. Now because um, I have uh, uh, room for two um, pages at the end, you don't see an end or a back to this. You only see a cover. But I can easily rectify that by adding a page. And they added a double page um, spread so if I wanted to do that differently, I'm going to delete that page. And now we have both a cover and a back and then the inside pages as well. All right, let's scroll this down. Um, the new document uh, dialog box also gives you uh, options for measurements for margins, number of columns. We've talked about that. Um, master pages now. Master pages are templates that you create for a page layout. So if you are, again, in InDesign. I did not want to be an illustrator. I wanted to be an InDesign. The master pages here, and I'm going to show both edges here so we can actually see what's going on in the PowerPoint as well as in the pages. Get this little thing out of the way, which is a toolbox. We don't really want it out of the way, but I just want it moved for right now. Um, master pages, you can apply to it to any document page that you want based on that layout. So again, if you want to make sure that you are going to have the master page in your document window, scroll down here. And then anything that you want added to a number of pages in your layout, you would create it on your master page. Um, you create a layout one time and then you use it as many times as you like. Um, obviously, if you want to do three column, two images, um, uh, one column heading and so forth, you can create that layout and then apply that master page to every single layout page that you want to use in that manner. Saves time consuming repetition and it will have consistency between the document pages so that uh, if you're trying to create a unified looking design, which naturally we most often are trying to do that, then that allows you the consistency that you need in order to make it look unified. Um, when you create a new document, one default master page is created and listed on the Pages panel. And again, if you look over here, the Pages panel is command central for all things relating to pages and master pages. Again, we've talked about that here, are all our layout pages. And these are the master pages that are above this double line. That's the command center. Um, it's used to add, delete, and apply master pages to document pages. You can add document pages. You can delete document pages. There's any number of things that's, that you can do with the Pages panel. And in InDesign, I use that almost as much as I use my toolbox, if not more in some instances. This also shows you um, on your master, um, on your Pages panel, that you can um, review where you are in terms of the um, selected page. We're on the one master or a master. This allows you to resize. This is kind of a new thing. You can actually resize individual pages between the layout. Um, and then also you can create a new page or you can trash one of your pages. Um, in InDesign, text is positioned in text frames and graphics are positioned in graphic frames. Uh, we've talked about that previously, but again, if you, I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to find the type tool. I'm going to create a frame, and then I, you can see, actually, uh, now that I'm on this too, I wanted to show you. You can see that I'm on a master page and I'm getting ready to create something on a master page by that dotted line. Now, if I were on a layout page, I mentioned to you before, my double click doesn't allow me to um, go into the layout pages like it should. Um, 
Let's see if I can do it this way. No. Nope. But you can see that since I've created that text box on a master page, that's applied to every single one of my layout pages as well. If you want something that's only, again, created on one layout page, you need to bring that layout page up into your document window. This is page 8. And you can see that it's highlighted there and it's in my window. And then I am going to create a graphics frame right underneath my text frame. Now you'll see that the graphics frame has that little X in it that reflects it's going to be, uh, I'm going to place an image or an illustration or something like that in it. Um, in this, um, the other difference that you can see is that this is a solid bounding box that goes around this graphics frame and this is a dotted text frame that shows that that's a frame that was created on my master page. When you create a frame for text or graphics on a master page, it's referred to as a master item. Um, all objects on a master page are called master items and function as placeholders, and that's where objects on the document pages are to be positioned. Um, guides, those are horizontal or vertical lines that you position on a page, um, and they will uh, can help guide you in aligning objects on the page. So again, if I get my toolbox out of the way here, and um, these um, rulers on the top and the left-hand side, if you click on that ruler and pull down, you'll see, hopefully we'll see, I don't know why we didn't see there, a um, guide applied to the page. Here we go. So this is the way you apply a, a horizontal guide. You just click and drag from that horizontal um, ruler at the top of your layout and then this is the way you create a vertical guide and again those are help uh, very helpful in aligning objects on your page here are the four guidelines that have been created um, on the overhead these are um, columns. If you look at these, these are columns. These are gutters. This is a margin that goes all the way around. And then these four blue, and they typically will be a different color, and then that one vertical one. Those are guides. You have a number of options for creating guides. As I've just shown you, you can create them manually. And you can also uh, use a Create Guides command on the Layout menu. So if you go in here and you go to Layout, um, you can create guides as well. This allows you to, to determine prior to going in and, prior, and not clicking and dragging the number of rows that, want, that you want, the number of columns you want, the gutters, so on and so forth. Now once created, the guides can be selected, moved, and deleted if necessary. You can also change the color of the guides if you find that they're not um, contrasting enough to help you identify what's what on your page layout. You can change the color. Um, and again, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get my selection tool and I'm going to select one of my guides and then I'm going to hit delete and it's gone. By default, guides are cyan, uh, column guides are violet, and margin guides are magenta. So again, if you look, the guides are cyan, the column guides, I don't have any columns up here, are violet, and then the margin guides are magenta. And depending on your preferences and on the color of objects in the layout, you might want to change those colors. And again, you can do that in preferences. InDesign lets you lock column guides independently from any ruler guide you create. By default, column guides are locked. And then uh, working with the transform panel, this identifies a selected object's width and height and, is horiz and its horizontal and vertical locations on the page. It's a very uh, useful uh, tool or panel. So if I create a rectangle here right in the middle of my document window, and I'm going to go up to Window and bring up my Transform panel. I hope, I think it's under Object. 
that gives me um, all of the information that I need about that box in terms of the XY position as it relates to your page. Um, it also tells me um, the horizontal, um, I'm sorry, the object's width and height, um, and um, any number of other options that you can choose if you want to transform that particular selected item. You can also see that up on your control bar here. Um, I just normally pull up the panel because that's just the way that I've always done it. Um, actually, I it's probably more productive to use this if the options or the information that you need is in your uh, control bar up here. It's a very easy way to access it. Uh, to work with the X and Y locations, you first need to understand that the zero point of the page by default is the top left corner of the page. Um, the X and Y locations are made in reference to that zero point. So the zero point, again, the top, not the margin, Let's see the trim line, which is right here, the top left corner of your page. And then those locations are made, the locations that we saw, the XY locations as it relates to the shape, are made in relationship to that corner. And there are nine reference points on the transform panel that, cons that uh, correspond to the nine points available on a selected items bounding box. So you see all three of these. Now, by default, again, the reference point is the top left corner. You can change that reference point if you click on one of these, um, like for example, that just uh, indicated, I just changed the reference point to my middle point on this uh, dialog box, or, um, oh, I'm trying to think of what's a good thing to call it that will help you. Um, and here it's changing to the right, um, panel box. So again, you can change, if you need to know the location of your objects as it relates to a different point, then you would identify that reference point that refers to that particular point on the box and that still identifies the reference, the XY reference from the upper left hand corner of your page. And we just talked about that. Uh, the control panel mimics all of the other panels. Um, so it does have a wide variety of options available for working with text and objects. Rather than always, just as we mentioned earlier, rather than always moving from one panel to another, um, you can um, usually find the option you're looking for in the control panel. I'm going to check how long we've been here. I'm going to stop recording and upload this um, in case you want to take a break and then I'll be back in just a moment.